Welcome back. Uh, in the last segment, we look into codes that handle one sample at a time. And uh, we can categorize this kind of codes into long singular, uniquely decodable, and instantaneous. And we argue that for code to be usable, that basically is useful, uh, the code has to be at least uniquely decodable. However, even though it's uniquely decodable, it may not still be desirable in practice, in the sense when in practice, we may want the code to be instantaneous. What we mean by a code to be instantaneous is that um, the decoder will be able to recover a symbol as soon as it read uh, its corresponding code word. Uh, for example, consider the following code. Uh, let's say I have a random variable x, and uh, the possible values of x can be a, b, c, d, and the code word, uh, code words are respectively c, c, b, c, c, m, c, d, uh, and is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And let's say we are trying to code uh, a Phoebe's uh, CBA, and that will code into the concatenation of code word CC, uh, CB, and um, CA, and that will be equal to 0010111. So, in the sense we say this code actually is instantaneous, because from the perspective of the decoder, um, when the, the decoder with the first three bits, it can immediately know that the first symbol is C and cannot be anything else. And that's what we mean by the code is instantaneous. So, in contrast, let's say if I have the code word, uh, it's very much similar, but let's say I have CA is equal to 1, 0, and CB is equal to 0, 0 instead, and the rest is the same. Um, and we try to code the same Phoebe's CBA, and that gets us 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, let's say. Now, this code is quite apparently not instantaneous. Actually, when the decoder trying to read the first three bits here, it cannot really tell whether this three bits is coming out of the simple C here, or actually, maybe the first two bits is coming out of the simple A, or sorry, simple B, and then, um, then maybe the next two bits are coming out of simple A. Uh, but by this time, actually, the decoder may be figuring out, okay, it cannot be that way, because uh, CO1, CO cannot be anything, so therefore it just can, uh, it, it can go backward and, uh, and, uh, correct itself, correct itself that, like, the first symbol is probably should be C instead of B. But, in this process, you can see that like it's not instantaneous in the sense that the decoder has to go all the way, all the way, uh, trying to, uh, reading quite a bit ahead before it can correct itself to figure out actually the correct symbol, uh, correct, uh, the, the first symbol should be C instead of B. So what is the condition needed, uh, for a code to be instantaneous? Actually, we have mentioned in the last segment, but we didn't go into great detail. Um, it turns out the uh, condition is very simple. Basically, a code will be instantaneous as long as there's no code word is a prefix of another code word. Let's see why this is true. Um, 
For example, if we have a code word, uh, it's actually a prefix of another code word, like in this case here, <coughs> with CB <coughs> is a prefix of CC here. Apparently, the code is not instantaneous because just as here, when the decoder is trying to figure out like the first three bits, um, what is the symbol for the first three bits, it can't not really tell whether the first two bits is coming out of this uh, code word of B instead of the first three bits is coming out of the code word of C. In contrast, if we don't have any code word as the prefix of the other code word, another code word, then um, apparently this problem will never happen. And like here, we will never we can always ensure that there will not be any uh, confusion whether there will be some other code word contributing uh, the first three bits of the code of C here. So therefore, the code will be instantaneous.